The Fermi Paradox, the contrary proposition that mathematically, extraterrestrial life should be everywhere, yet we find zero conclusive evidence for that to be the case. Billions of stars per galaxy, more than a trillion galaxies in the observable universe alone. How can it be that our single planet on our single star in our single galaxy, against all odds, is the lone wanderer carrying a payload so precious that it cannot be found among the sextillions of other stars in the universe? You are more likely to win the lottery, then go to the casino and be dealt a royal flush in your first poker hand, then win with a single number bet on roulette, then get struck by lightning and die as you walk out of the casino, than for our planet to be the only one with life. Which raises the question, where is all the extraterrestrial life? You're watching Interspatial. Subscribe for more and drop a like on the video if you're enjoying so far, it really helps me out. Extraterrestrial life has been the subject of countless media pieces, scientific papers and fictional stories since the dawn of man. We are naturally curious creatures and once our basic needs are met, many of us look up to the stars and wonder what awaits us there. It's impossible for our brains to even grasp how vast the universe truly is, which I think lends credence to the idea of the rare earth hypothesis. Which is just that, an idea that argues that the combination of several extremely improbable events led to the rise of intelligent life on earth, and that this was so infathomably unlikely that even with sextillions of other stars that could have theoretically raised life, only one did. A key argument of the rare earth hypothesis utilises the Drake equation. Pioneered by Frank Drake in 1961, this aims to estimate, using many different factors, how many intelligent civilizations that are advanced enough to communicate with us exist. Fi in this equation relates to the percentage of life in the universe that has reached intelligence, which brings me to the title of today's video. I put forward that, while life on the scale of something like Star Wars with light speed travel and ability to communicate across galaxies may not exist, the probability of simple life, perhaps even simple single-celled organisms existing somewhere in the universe is extremely high. These civilizations, if you can call them that, will have no way of communicating with others or even making their presence known to our present day observation technologies. Extraterrestrial life doesn't have to mean aliens with warp drives and cloak fields that are already watching our every move from afar. It is in fact far, far more likely that simple life exists that has not spread beyond its planet or solar system yet. While that may sound disappointing, I can promise you that we do not want to be the ones found by technologically superior aliens. We want to be the ones doing the finding. Which could be a topic for an entirely different video, so if you want to see one on that, let me know. Given that we know that the series of events that led from abiogenesis, the process by which life arises from non-living organic compounds, to humans, had hundreds of steps, each of which are thought to be extremely unlikely. It's highly probable that life elsewhere in the universe does exist, but is stuck in one of these stages, as the conditions, elements, or just sheer luck required are not there for them to progress further. Some life in one galaxy may still be in the prokaryote stages, single-celled organisms without a nucleus or defined cell membrane, in another galaxy, there may be life that has made the jump to multicellular, but has fallen on a different hurdle. While the odds of events occurring exactly as they did on Earth to create intelligent life capable of interstellar travel may be low, the odds of just a few of those steps being successful elsewhere in the universe is comparatively much higher. Linked to this idea of hurdles for life to overcome on the path to intelligence is the idea of the so-called Great Filter. Touted as the solution to the Fermi Paradox, the Great Filter suggests that somewhere in the timeline of life there is a barrier so great with chances of passing it so slim that once life reaches this stage it either destroys itself or simply cannot progress further. The scary part is, we don't know if the Great Filter is ahead of or behind humans. Will there be some mass extinction event in the future that prevents humans from progressing further and wipes out potentially the only intelligent species in the universe? Or was the Great Filter something in our past, such as the evolution from single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms. We simply cannot know. Humanity 10,000 years in the future. What was the first thing that popped into your mind when I said that? Spaceships with warp drives, infinite energy sources, nuclear apocalypse, viral annihilation. 10,000 years may seem like an extremely long time, but on the stellar timescale, it's a grain of sand in a desert. Planets similar to ours orbiting stars similar to our sun have been around for billions of years longer than Earth has. What if Earth had formed just 1 million years earlier than it did? That's only 0.02% of Earth's age. Yet humans could theoretically be 1 million years more advanced than we are now. 
I don't think it's controversial to say that if humans are still around in the year 1,000,000-2021, we would have colonized the galaxy based on our current rate of technological growth. It took us 3.3 million years to go from cavemen to inventing the light bulb. It took only 90 years from inventing the light bulb to landing men on the moon. Just imagine how far humanity could progress in the next million years with the accelerating pace of technological development. This brings us back to the Great Filter. If so many planets could have had a billion year head start on Earth in developing life, the skies should be teeming with probes and radio waves and starships by now. But it isn't. This means either 1. Every time other life has tried to evolve, it was shut down in a much earlier stage than we have even reached. Or 2. The Great Filter lies only slightly ahead of us and we will destroy ourselves before venturing beyond our own solar system. I prefer the former over the latter, I don't know about you. With our current understanding of physics, the speed of light appears to be the cosmic speed limit for the universe. Einstein's theory of relativity says that anything with mass cannot exceed 300 million meters per second. In our relative terms, traveling 300,000 kilometers in one second sounds absolutely absurd and you may wonder why this quote speed limit is even a problem. But this ties into the Fermi paradox very nicely as given the vastness of the universe it is possible that intelligent life exists outside of the observable universe. This area of the universe is everything we can see and everything we ever will see of the universe unless Einstein is wrong and faster than light travel is actually possible. This is because space is expanding at an accelerating rate meaning that every year it expands more than it did the previous year. This means that distant parts of the universe are expanding so fast that they are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. I say moving, but in reality it is more like being stretched. The matter itself is not actually moving faster than light and thus the theory of relativity is still conserved. This however means that beyond the observable universe, there are areas of the universe that we will never see. It's physically impossible. Beyond this, we do not know how much more universe there is and we will never see, hear or feel what is happening beyond this circle because the light being emitted from objects beyond this line is moving away from us faster than the speed of light. The size of the universe beyond the observable portion is estimated to be at least 250 times larger than the part we see, but we can never actually know its true size. This lends even more credence to the hypothesis that extraterrestrial life must exist somewhere in the universe, because even if intelligent life that has conquered entire galaxies does exist beyond this 93 billion light year threshold, we would have no way of detecting them or even know they exist, nor they us. Even if we had a vehicle that could go 99% the speed of light and we set off right now towards the edge of the observable universe, we would still never see any light from beyond that boundary since it is moving away from us at more than 100% the speed of light. Think of it like two cars on a highway, but one is going one mile per hour faster than the other. The back car will never reach the front car, even if it travelled for a trillion years. We will never see the light beyond the observable universe, even if we travelled 99% the speed of light for a trillion years. With billions of Earth-like planets in the Goldilocks zone of stars similar to our Sun in the Milky Way galaxy alone, the odds of carbon-based life evolving through abiogenesis must be infathomably low for Earth to be the lone bastion of life in the universe. However, who says life has to be carbon-based? We know that all life on Earth is based on four key families of chemicals. Amino acids, often called the building blocks of life, DNA and RNA, lipids or fats, and carbohydrates. All of these compounds contain carbon and abiogenesis from these compounds creates carbon-based life. This is what we know as the primordial soup. There are two ways to look at this conundrum. The only life we know about is carbon based, that's a fact. All life on earth is made from the same stuff when you get down to the nitty gritty of it. You can view this as evidence that all life must be carbon based everywhere and it's impossible for life to arise from anything except these compounds, which is completely valid. If you only had one apple and that apple was red, it's logical to assume that any other apples you find must also be red. But they're not all red, which leads to another way of viewing carbon based life. And that is that one piece of data cannot be treated as completely reliable. Therefore it is possible, perhaps even probable, that life can evolve in ways we can't even imagine, and that there may be silicon based beings out there that laugh at the idea of life popping out of organic carbon based compounds. We simply can't know for sure at this time. If, and this is a big if, life is found elsewhere in the universe and that life is carbon based and built from the same or similar compounds to ourselves, then we can more securely, but still not definitely, assume that life has to evolve this way. But since it is believed that all life on Earth evolved from a single common ancestor, we simply can't know from a single data point. It is worth noting that this hypothesis is considered quite unlikely in the scientific community as life requires not only an energy source but also building blocks that can be arranged into various forms and evolve. These carbon based compounds are perfect for that and we have yet to find anything so good. The sheer number of planets that could support life that exist in the observable universe, the vast expanse beyond the 
observable universe that could harbor even intelligent life without us ever knowing, and the possibility for non-carbon-based life all point to the idea that extraterrestrial life almost certainly exists somewhere out there, against all odds. Thanks very much for watching. Take a look into the sky every now and then, and enjoy the rest of your day.